optimized here. Before we get into the video, I need to address the glaring problem. Wikipedia. Wikipedia is often under criticism for being uncredible. It turns out Wikipedia is just as reliable as other encyclopedias. It's just that encyclopedias are secondary sources, so encyclopedias shouldn't be used for academic purposes. I'm simply using Wikipedia as a list and starting point for the razors. Now what even is a razor? A razor is a general guide that allows someone to eliminate unlikely explanations for a phenomenon or avoid unnecessary actions. You might agree or disagree with some of these razors depending on your philosophical and moral stances. Let's start with the one you've probably heard of, Occam's Razor. Occam's Razor is the idea that simpler explanations are more likely to be correct, so you should avoid unnecessary or improbable assumptions. If you are familiar with the medical field, you've probably heard the phrase, when you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. This is an example of Occam's Razor, with the horses being a more probable assumption than zebras. Here's another example of Occam's Razor. You come across a broken tree. You think of two possible ways this tree Tree broke. The wind broke it or a black hole randomly appeared and broke the tree. Which one are you more likely to believe? It seems intuitive to pick the wind as it is more probable. Occam's razor segues right into Sagan's standard. Sagan's standard does not have razor in the name, but it does fall under the definition. Sagan's standard is the idea that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Going back to the tree example, let's say you did think a black hole broke the tree. For it to be accepted, because it is an extraordinary claim, it would require extraordinary evidence. This is because the evidence needs to make the unlikeliness of the black hole more likely than the wind breaking the tree. I recently made a video on the three burdens in debate. In that video, I go over something called the burden of rebuttal. The burden of rebuttal only applies if the burden of proof is fulfilled. If it is not fulfilled, then the claim can be dismissed. Hitchens razor is the idea that what can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. It's basically saying if you don't meet your burden of proof, then your claim can be dismissed. So if I were to claim that Jimmy killed Sarah and did not give evidence, the claim could be dismissed. The reason I keep saying could be is because the opposite opposition could steel man the claim and keep arguing. So the opposition could accept that Jimmy killed Sarah, yet argue that he should not be punished. Newton's Flaming Laser Sword don't ask me why it's called that. Also known as Alder's Razor, is the idea that if something cannot be settled with experimentation or observation, then it is not worthy of debate. Newton's flaming laser sword is a normal razor on steroids, because it eliminates so many things. Any question like what do pink unicorns eat can't be observed. I completely disagree with this because you can debate stuff like religious arguments and philosophy that can't be observed. It also seems to contradict itself as it is a philosophical claim that can't be observed. But what am I to say? I'm some random YouTuber. If you're curious about any of these and want to do your own research, I will have links to them in the description. For the next razor, let's say you are walking home and someone bumps into you and spills water on you. Which are you more likely to believe? That they accidentally spilled the water on you or purposely spilled it on you? If you said accidentally, then you would agree with Hanlon's razor. Hanlon's razor is the idea to so never attribute malice that which can be adequately explained by stupidity. Your take on this razor is heavily dependent if you think people want to do harm or want to help. Hanlon's razor does not have to be applied to just stupidity. It can be applied to other motives. For example, a criminal might rob a bank to feed their family not out of malice. The next razor, Hume's guillotine, seems complex at first, but is pretty simple. Hume's guillotine is defined on Wikipedia as, what ought to be cannot be deduced from what is. Hume's guillotine simply put is the idea that what should morally be done cannot be deduced from non-moral facts. For example, we evolved to eat meat, but just because we evolved that way does not make it moral. Hume's guillotine is very controversial when you combine it with Hume's fork. Hume's fork separates analytic statements and synthetic statements. Analytic statements are statements that are true by definition. For example, a triangle has three sides. Synthetic statements are statements that are not true by definition, like cats have four legs. Hume's guillotine separates moral claims from both of these, making it impossible to deduce moral facts. This is where a lot of disagreements arise. I will leave it to the comments section to debate. Grice's razor also seems complex on the surface, but it's pretty simple. Wikipedia defines Grice's razor as a principle of parsimony. Conversational implications are to be preferred over semantic context for linguistic explanations. Grice's razor is simply saying that context for a word or phrase should be preferred to the textbook definition of that word. For example, let's say two people are having a conversation about if God exists. One of them calls themselves a Gnostic atheist. The definition of Gnostic atheist is so 
someone who claims to know that God does not exist. This person may be saying they are a Gnostic atheist, but the way they are using the term seems to be more in line with agnostic atheist. An agnostic atheist is someone who is not certain if God exists or not. Grice's razor is very important in power scaling, which is what I do. As a statement such as Boo being omnipotent, taking out of context, leads to people thinking Boo is way stronger than he is. You may have heard of something called the problem of induction. Karl Popper's answer to the problem of induction is Popper's falsifiability principle. Popper's falsifiability principle is the statement that for a theory to be considered scientific, it must be falsifiable. Before you understand the problem of induction, you need to understand circular reasoning. Circular reasoning is a logical fallacy where you support your premises with your conclusion. An example of circular reasoning would be an atheist saying there is no god because there is no such thing as a god. They are saying god does not exist because God does not exist. Now how does this apply to the problem of induction? While most of science uses induction to come to conclusions, it uses the idea that the future will resemble the past. The idea that the future will resemble the past is circular because it is justified by the future resembling the past. Induction is justified by induction. Karl Popper looked at the problem of induction and went, oh, there's a problem with induction? Well we are just going to remove the idea that we can confirm hypotheses. Popper's falsifiability principle went on to also solve the distinction between pseudoscience and actual science. Pseudoscience is something that claims to be scientific but does not follow the principles of the scientific method. If the goal of the scientific method is to falsify theories and not confirm them, it gives a pretty good guideline for what's pseudoscience. So anytime someone tries to prove gravity by dropping something, hit them with the problem of induction. That was every razor on Wikipedia except for one. Dalton's third rule. And for the life of me, I can't find any other info on this. It has no Wikipedia page and it was recently added, so I'm just gonna ignore it. Also, under Hume's guillotine, it says weird info that is not related to Hume's guillotine from my knowledge. So if you know anything about either of those things, feel free to comment about it. This is the second part in a three-part series where I go over burdens, razors, and fallacies. This is different from my normal content as I normally post power scaling and fiction videos. So if you are interested in that, consider subscribing. This is Optimized and I'll see you in the next video. Watch this video if you want to know the three burdens in debating.